until a state representative of the Tennessee House 92nd District. Today I'm joining you from the banks of the beautiful Duck River here in Marshall County, Tennessee. Ms. Walters asked me to do a video about the Statue of Liberty and share some facts you might not know about that monument. The Statue of Liberty, enlightening of the world, was a gift from, of friendship from the people of France to the United States and is recognized as a universal symbol of freedom and democracy. The Statue of Liberty was dedicated on October 28, 1886, and it was designated as a national monument in 1924. The statue was made in pieces in France and then shipped across the Atlantic Ocean in crates. Once in New York, it was assembled over many years by hundreds of workers. Now for some interesting details about the statue. What materials make up the Statue of Liberty? The Statue of Liberty is made of copper, 3 seconds of an inch thick, or the same as two American pennies placed together. The internal structure is made of cast iron and stainless steel. Why is the statue green? The statue's copper has oxidized to form the outer patina or green coating. Upon completion in 1886, the Statue of Liberty was more of a traditional brown color, like an American penny. How tall is the Statue of Liberty? The statue is 305 feet in height, from the ground to the tip of the flame. That is equivalent to the height of a 22-story building. Why is the Statue of Liberty a woman? Classic images of liberty are often depicted in the female form, and the Statue of Liberty was modeled after the Roman goddess of liberty. How many torches has there been on the statue? The statue is holding her second torch. The first torch's interior support structure corroded beyond repair, and it was replaced in 1984. Here are the symbols on the Statue of Liberty. What does the torch represent? The torch is a symbol of enlightenment, since her official name is Liberty, enlightening the world. What is written on the statue's tablet? The tablet in the statue's left hand has the date of American independence, July 4th, 1776. Now why does the statue wear, or what does she wear on her head? The Statue of Liberty wears a crown. The spires above the crown represent light, like a halo, since she is the Roman goddess Libertas. Where on the statue are the broken chains located and what do the chains mean? The broken chains are near the statue's feet. They're not visible from the ground level. Many believe that the chains represent breaking free from tyranny and servitude. The Statue of Liberty means a lot of things to a lot of people. A beacon of hope, liberty, and friendship from France as a gift from an ally and a friend. What it means to me is responsibility. When I was in middle school at Apollo Junior High School in Middle Tennessee, there was a painting on the gym wall in the school gym. It said, freedom with responsibility. As free Americans, we have freedoms and liberties not many people have in our world. We should not take this freedom for granted and exercise the responsibility as we go about our lives as Americans. Well, I hope you've learned something new today about the great monument in the United States. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Hey everybody, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today for Art Time with Mrs. Jenny. We are going to be focusing on the Statue of Liberty. This is our rendition. This is our homage to the Statue of Liberty. Does it look just like the Statue of Liberty? No, but that's okay. There's lots of art that is created to represent the Statue of Liberty. We can all tell what it is. Yours doesn't have to look just like the picture that we're going to do today. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to make it just a little different. It's okay if it doesn't look just like mine. If we go in an art gallery and the theme was the Statue of Liberty, we wouldn't want to look at the same picture over and over again. That would be extremely boring. So I hope yours doesn't look just like mine. All right, with that being said, let's discuss the picture a little bit. The colors that we have, you have lots of different blues, perhaps even a little bit of gray. And in the background, we have reds, yellows, oranges, and blue. So make sure that you collect all of these colors. We also have obviously used black to outline. You know that I think black gives everything a finished look, so please make sure that you are doing that to your artwork. All right, we would also like to thank our representative, Mr. Rick Tillis, for taking time out of his very busy, busy schedule, especially right now, to do a introduction to our video. We really appreciate that, and we appreciate the fact that you support education and the arts very much. 
All right, let's go ahead and get started. Please make sure that your paper is turned vertical. So that is straight up and down. I'll be drawing with a Sharpie because I want to make sure everybody can see really well what I'm doing. It's probably more beneficial to draw with a pencil because if you make a mistake, it's easier to erase. Remember to work large and it's okay if things go beyond the border. If they extend off the paper, it just makes your artwork more interesting. All right, in the center of your paper, I would like for everybody to draw a big U. You'll hear me discuss lots of times that artists break things down into sections, that we look at things completely different. It's a very unique perspective that we have. We see beauty in things that other people don't. So it makes being an artist and looking through our eyes, pretty interesting life to lead. All right, so we've got our U shape. Now what I want you to do is draw a rectangle. Okay, and on top of that, you're gonna draw a smaller rectangle. So we've got a U and a big rectangle and a small rectangle. Let's go ahead and skip down here and let's draw the neck to our Statue of Liberty. You don't want it too small and you don't want it too big. And then we are going to draw a curved line like so. So you can see her curved line there. On the left, I want you to draw a curved line and I want you to bring it up pretty close to the top of that rectangle. Okay, let's go ahead and start to draw her crown. Now we know that the Statue of Liberty's crown has seven points, right? And we know that those seven points on the crown represent the seven seas and continents. You may not be able to get seven points on the top of your crown, and that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. And ours is a representation, so that means it represents it. Represents it. It does not look exactly like it. All right. We're going to draw a line that angles out to the left and the right. And then basically we're going to go down and up, down and up. So I'm going to go down and up, down and up, down and up. So I happen to end up with four. If I wanted to on the left and right here, I could add another crown if I wanted to. All right, let's add a bit of interior detail. So on this rectangle let's do some lines that go straight up and down and let's go ahead and start to work on the hair and the face so let's do a line on the left and right that angles down and we're going to draw rectangles one rectangle two each rectangle gets a little longer than the last and we're going to do that to both sides. Now, remember, if you need to stop the tape, you can. All right, so we've got our hair. Let's go ahead and start on the face. Oh, let's add a little bit of hair on the inside here. I want to draw a curved line on the left and right. And then we're going to add some interior lines. Those interior lines really add so much to a picture. All right, so now we're ready to start that face. So in the middle, maybe a little lower than the middle, about right here, I want you to draw just a little curved line. That's gonna be our nose. And then under that, you're gonna draw a smile line. So you've got a little curved line for the nose and below that, you've got a little smile line. Above that, you're going to Give it a top lip, and then you're going to give it a bottom lip. If your lips are thinner than the ones that I've put here or bigger, that is okay. All right, I'm going to draw a little line right there to kind of show the bridge of the nose. 
And on the left and right, I'm just gonna draw a little curve, just to kind of give the nose a bit more shape. And then I'm gonna put some eyes in. Now, if you'll kind of do an invisible line and go up from the side of the nose, I can put a curved line here and a curved line here. Let's put a circle, try and make them symmetrical, which means equal. And you can put a pupil in there. Remember, you can always leave a white spot called a hot spot. Makes it look a little more realistic. All right, we can add the bottom part to our eyes. And if you want, you can do a little curve. Make sure it is a soft curve. When you do eyebrows, if you angle them too much, you can make somebody look mad. So we just want a relaxed curve above those eyes. All right, looking good, everybody. All right, I'm gonna move this up a little so you can see her garment. It looks like, it is a robe, so it has movement. So I want you to draw some curved lines here to give her garment some movement. When you get over here, you can do a line kind of going in the opposite direction. And then let's go up to about here with her garment on her arm and do a few lines there. So interior lines are very important. And by adding this, it does give some movement. It makes our piece not look stagnant not look flat. As an artist, we want to avoid that. Okay, now we're going to do the torch that is in her hand. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Just putting lots of simple shapes together. So you're going to draw a U. Now this may be a bit tricky because I can't see your pictures. I don't know what you've got going on over here. Remember, overlapping is good in a picture. So I would put the U shape kind of this close in proximity to her crown. And overlapping's good because it creates depth. So hopefully we do have the crown kind of sitting on top there a little bit. All right, I'm gonna draw a rectangle on the top of my U. And then, I'm going to draw a curved line on the left and a curved line on the right. And then you're just gonna kinda like we did the crown, go down and up and down and up. And you can do some interior detail there for our fire. All right, for the hand, don't make this too complicated. I will admit hands are difficult to draw and so are feet. Horses are very difficult. But let's not overthink it. On top of the torch that she's holding, I want you to put your marker down right underneath this rectangle. And we're gonna say one bump, two bump, three bump, four. So we started our line under our rectangle, one bump, two bump, three bump, four. And then we're just going to extend those down and make some fingers. So that's the fingers on top. And if you have a pencil, you can erase that line before you outline at the end. And then we want to do a bump right here at the bottom. Kind of make it, if you can, in line with this finger. And then you're going to make a bump there. And then just kind of connect that to your line. All right, so she's holding the torch. All right, when you get finished with that, if you want, we can add some fireworks in the background to represent the 4th of July. And the way that I do those, I'll put a dot, and then I'm just gonna do curved lines, and I'm gonna keep curving, 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 curving until I go all the way around. And then I'm gonna have a few sparkles flying off of that. So again, I'm gonna put my dot down and now I'm going to do my curved line around, 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 and then have a few sparks. Okay, and you can continue that all the way around. Now, before you outline, that's when you can erase and fix anything or add anything that you wanted to. 
And remember our color choices. If you look closely, I didn't color my statue in all the way. I actually left some white spots. But I did mix several different blues together and then I added my color in the background. So this is our representation of the Statue of Liberty. Now, as far as a follow-up assignment, you know that that is important to me to suggest some things for you to do after this to continue your education of the assignment. I encourage you to discuss what liberty means with your family and ask them about your background and your heritage. A lot of times families, I know I as a mom will take for granted that certain things are discussed at school and then I find out that that wasn't something that was covered or they were able to go over in depth because their curriculum can be quite tight sometimes according to whatever the standards are. So it's great to do art lessons because then that opens up a door for conversation. So ask your mom and dad what liberty means what do you think it means? Obviously, freedom, and we live um, in America, which is obviously known for the home of the free and the brave. So, elaborate on that and ask, ask your parents where your family originates from. Did they come from England or Germany? Did they come from Africa? Where did your family come from? And then discuss present-day America and what freedom and liberty looks like now in comparison to before when our families first came over. Another thing that you could also do is look up the poem by Emma Lazarus and break that down into sections and read it with your child and ask them what they think the sections mean and then just elaborate with them on what that means to you. So you're teaching critical thinking, you're teaching them to express themselves, to use their words, to have a discussion. These are things that are very, very important. You could also talk to them about what symbols are. So obviously when we talked about the Statue of Liberty, we know that there was quite a bit of symbolism in it. Like like what Mr. Tillis discussed, even all the way down to the feet of the statue and the broken chains. So what are some national symbols that we have in America? We have the Eagle, we have Mount Rushmore, we have the White House, we have the Liberty Bell, we have the American flag. So what are some of these symbols and what do they represent? What are some things that you could find online about them? and make some little notes about it in a notebook. All right, I hope that y'all enjoyed today's lesson and I would love to see some of your work. Thank you so much for uh, doing these. I love doing lessons like this with kids and my boys in particular love doing these lessons um, when they are made available. And please subscribe. Tell others about these videos. They're not only fun, but they are also educational. And thank you so much again to Representative Rick Tillis for taking time out of your schedule, especially at such a busy uh, time as this. We really appreciate it. Y'all have a blessed day, and I can't wait to see your art.